Yeah. From beautiful Ventura, we're at Buena Lane for the title matches of today's JBT event. Both divisions on the same pair because they got these awesome TD lights here, so you're actually watching bowlers, not silhouettes of bowlers. That is one of the very cool things about Buena. Handicap division here, we got Peter Hugelmeyer having climbed the ladder to reach top seed Kyle or Kennison or Kevin or somebody, Anders. It's actually Kyle, I think. Looking to win his third career JBT title, he's absolutely ran away with this tournament, but it's a step ladder, so he's got to win one more game, and he trails early against Peter on the scoreboard, and he's giving six pins a handicap as well, so trouble through four frames for Anders. In the scratch division, two of our best out here in SoCal, Cameron Smith, one of our best all time, taking on Wesley Lowe, who by the time he's done will probably be right up there with him. Cameron 21, Wesley I think 15, you know? 20, whatever. He's got a two to start it. Wesley's like eight, so you know, good enough. They are bowling the endless 10th frame today. We'll tell you more about that a little later. That strike in Cameron's fourth frame gives him a double and essentially ties up the match as a result as Wesley's clean without a double, working on a spare here in his fourth frame. Wesley also ran away with this tournament in the semifinals, qualified at plus 152 and then shot. Good heavens. 741 for his three game semifinal set. And that strike here gets him in the, gets him in the match. Of course. Wesley attracting additional crowd, we love it. Uh, hold on a, another dry pattern today. Both patterns this weekend were very dry. That's part of that is the natural product of the surface here at Buena. Everything is friction here. Shark is basically an oily house shot here, so to put out a shorter or lower volume pattern just means mega friction. Bowlers adjusted to it a, better today than they did yesterday. And there's also you know, different characteristics to the patterns. We'll talk about that if we get a second two as well. Yugi in his fifth, double working, and he uh, almost trips out everything, leaves only the four. Kyle, fresh off uh, Mark Baker's bowling camp. You clap all you want, that's good. <laughs> fresh off the Mark Baker bowling camp, and obviously uh, did him a world of good. Bakes is a bit of a genius with bowlers of all ages and average levels. Nice job of this bear from Peter as well. <laughs> Wesley, a uh, preacher naturally gifted, all the talk about him. Always a pleasure, man. Good to see you. See you next month. All the talk in the you know, nationwide bowling level has been about Cortez and about Cameron Doyle, but Wesley is essentially their age peer, just a hair older, has is, is been doing an awful lot of great things himself. Between our tour, Teen Masters, Junior Gold finalist last year, that's top 16 of any age. And that's been a characteristic here too, even though they're bone dry, if you don't quite catch it and send it too far right, it won't recover either. That's due to the flatness of both of these patterns that we bowled on this weekend. Wesley attempts to go hard and straight at the seven and does cover it up. So we talk about these patterns here. This was yesterday's pattern called Vienna, if you're looking up all these Kegel patterns. There it is. So it's a little bit longer than what we bowled on today. We'll talk more about that more. The darker the lines, the heavier the concentration of oil. And you see uh, the, the lean level view of it flat in the middle from basically 15 to 15, but a lot lower volume even though it was longer. So that push and that, that hold never developed at all in the middle, led to lower scores. Catch Peter's shot here. Oh, oh man, almost breaks everything up. Here's today's pattern, five feet shorter, but a much heavier concentration in that very first part of the lane, the heads, that front load. So the pattern actually stayed a lot longer today and actually developed a little bit easier as it went. By the end of the day yesterday, they got absolutely squirrely. Today, the scores seem to get better throughout the day. So it's the, the lane surface, it's the shape of the pattern, it's the volume applied, all sorts of variables dictate the scoring pace, where the bowlers play, and how you know high they score and how long in the day they're able to hold those patterns. Wesley uh, left side mostly to himself today, just got that better and better look. When he gets confident, he can strike all day and all night. Which who knows, maybe he'll need to strike all night in the endless 10. How that works is if they strike on their fill ball, regardless of what else they do in the 10th frame, they can continue to strike, getting 10 pins additional for every strike they get. So 
Nobody is eliminated until the last ball is thrown. Cameron trips that four there. Trails, or trails by none. They're dead even on the scoreboard through six frames. Peter Mark Hugelmeyer's brother, Mark, a four-time winner last year. Struggling a little bit in scratch this year, but he'll be back. While Peter yet to win his first title, Kyle a two-time winner. Part of the Andrews brothers from Oceanside. Twin brothers as well. I can't stand it when they wear the exact same shirt. Drives me up a wall. And if he really wanted to, he could sub in at any given moment. Would, would you? Would you? Uh, would you? Do anything about it? Nice looking shot again, man. It's not like he comes back a, you know, this radically different bowler. It's just seems more in charge of his game. I think that's what Bakes does. More than takes what game you have and, and, and sort of fine tunes what you already know how to do. Wesley a high game of 279 today, did it twice and a 268 in there. So on a day that was uh, a minus 40 cut, he had a crack at the eight game all time record. If he had, if he had, didn't have that 179 game five, he would have had a legitimate shot at it. Here is a fun fact about Cameron Smith. This, well, he is grumpy, but he's working on it. It's a set of fun facts, not a grumpy fact. Oh, <laughs> I'll make a little less grumpy carrying the Brooklyn. Cameron's a 34-time champion, third all-time on our list. Cameron's very first win, when was it? On Mother's Day, back in 2001, I believe, at, at Amoth Inca in Yuma, Arizona. He won. I still remember that picture. Uh, handicap win, I remember that picture with his mom. <laughs> That was win number one. There have been over 30 more since then. Nowhere near his last win, whenever the next one is. There will be plenty more of them. He's bowled more tournaments than anybody else in the history of our tournament. Another 10 in the pit for Andrews. Just bang, bang, bang. That's a four-bagger. This is the first time that anybody has pressed Tugelmeyer all step ladder long. Let's see if he has the answer here. Right after the answer here, we'll go to the break and make sure to watch part two. Oh, his answer's on the Brooklyn side, so still a match in both divisions. Watch part two to see who comes out on